Hello there, and welcome to the Haze Challenge. Too much glare, huh? I usually do these at dawn, but uh, I have a slot open for Monday, and I'm not going to feel like doing it tomorrow, I don't believe. <sighs> Midnight, but... But I'm gonna I'm going to do it now. So what we're gonna do is a taste challenge. And I have Cruzan aged rum, aged dark, aged a minimum of two years at the most four. So it says right there on the link below the website, aged two to four years. So you say, well, that's an average of three years. Right. Craig Swenson, good afternoon. Hey Craig, thanks for making that cameo appearance last night on uh on um Super inclusive Saturday. Don't feel shy. I know it's some people, it's hard to go on the internet. It's intimidating. I'm used to it because I taught high school for so long. You're used to being in front of people and running your mouth, you know. Um, but thanks for doing that. Oh, and talking about comments, we weren't really talking about comments, but somebody told me earlier, a little while ago, he made a comment. He said, I'm not going to jump to conclusions, which is a good thing. But my comment on your hangout last night, uh, Super Inclusive Saturday, got deleted. And it was a good comment about baseball or something how it related to the topic. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't remember deleting any comments. I only deleted one person who was like troll comments. He said like, y'all are stupid, something like that. Y'all are stupid dummies, said it like five, six times straight in a row. So I was just like, oh, well, it's one of these comments. So I deleted that, you know, took him out of the thing. But uh, look, let me tell you all something. There's a big problem on this platform with comments disappearing. That the author, I guess you call it the channel host, does not take down. And I'm not talking about inappropriate comments that a robot takes down, a bot. But it could be something to do with that where there's an automatic thing. But then it takes down good comments. That it misreads or something like this. Because I've had this happen repeatedly for years, people will tell me, why'd you delete my comment? That makes me angry. And I say, I didn't delete anything. I didn't delete anything. Or they'll say, you're rude. And this happens. Jerry Fort was talking about this on Jerry's, Jerry Fort's beer reviews. He said, same thing. People say, you're rude. You don't answer my comments. No, we don't see it. We can't answer what we don't see. Okay. Whatever shows up, that's what I can answer. Comments. But if I don't see it, I can't address it. And if something gets deleted without my knowledge, what can I do about it? So then you got the viewers thinking the people, not just me, a lot of people thinking we're being rude or we're taking down comments. No, it's something wrong with the system. I'm telling you. And this has been going on a long time and it's frustrating, but we don't run it. So we can't do anything about it. So that's the answer. There's not really nothing else I can do. My hands are tied. I told him, in the comment section, I said, well, look, um, just repost a comment and I'll look at it. Now, if I he, if he reposts, if he makes it again and it gets deleted, then he's gonna think I'm taking it down, right? But I'm not. So that's, that's just a situation. Uh, it's good to talk about that so that you'll know what's going on. It ain't us. It has a little bubble in the glass, <laughs> not a chip. Looks like a bubble. Okay, um, might be a chip. I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't remember hitting this against anything. But here's the Bacardi Reserva Ocho. This is the competitor. Eight year aged. Now that's an age statement. Clearly aged eight years. It was put in a barrel in 2010, and then it was bottled in 2018. And I bought it in 2018. Um. Or was it early 2019? Because what happened was Walmart had some left over. And if they don't move it, they get rid of it. They sold all of them this year for the full $70 price, $75 price. But last year, or it was either before New Year's or after 2019, they had a bunch. They marked them down to $35. $35. In the cedar case with the humidor and the glass front with the snaps and the door comes down, it had this and the uh, Grand Reserva Diaz, the 10 year age. $35. Greatest deal in the world. This thing on its own is 40 bucks. Uh, 30 bucks, sorry. 28 to 30 bucks. The 10-year age is $40, 38 to $40. So 
30 and 40, 70. That's without the case. And I got up to 35. Great deal. Dave gave the Founders Four Giants Imperial IPA a 99. I have to try it now. I know. I was saying 99. <laughs> it really was good, though. In man, Ron, if you could have one beer during a barbecue, what would it be? Only one beer? I know what you mean. Only one. I don't know. It wouldn't really matter. Bush. Bush beer. Schlitz. Dixie. I don't know. I, I can't answer questions like that because I really don't know. Also, what is the beer that is most nostalgic for you, especially during the summer? Most nostalgic. Hmm. Probably be Schlitz or Dixie because Schlitz commercials used to be on TV all the time. Then that beer practically disappeared. Although I saw it this morning at the store. I went there after mass to the store to get some milk. And I said, there's Schlitz. Good dates too on it. Um, so that's just one I used to see all the commercials as a real little kid. Three years old, I remember those commercials on television. So rubber stopper. Mm. All right. Go back in there. So I, it's hard to say, but Schlitz or Dixie, I guess. You, I mean, I grew up with Budweiser commercials too, but it's still so common, right? It's not really nostalgic. It's around now, everywhere, everywhere you go. 12 million barrels a year they make. You say that's a lot lower than 50 million they used to make 32 years ago. Yeah, you're right. But most of that's been lost to Bud Light because <laughs> Bud Light used to probably be less than 10 million barrels. It was probably less than 10 million barrels in 88. Now it's probably over. Uh, I had the stats. It's a lot. It's you add them together. It's basically what they were doing then. Uh, and I'm sure they don't mind. Why would the company care? They're making all the money they lost from Budweiser. They made from Bud Light. It's, it's like companions. It's, they they get the money. They make it. No. If I had to pick one, I would want a very large one. Right. A quart, a quart of Tecate. <laughs> I don't know. I would just drink one beer, though, honestly, maybe two. I, I drink a lot of water and things like that, and that's no joke. I just drink a lot of water, just one glass after another when it's hot outside, like today, 90 degrees. I'd rather just drink water. Tap water, too, not like bottled water. You might be appalled at that. I don't live in Flint, Michigan. Um, so in room temperature, I don't really like ice water. You go to work restaurants, they always want to give you ice water, but I'd rather just drink it out the faucet. You say, that's crazy. Well, that's what I prefer. My grandfather was like that. In fact, I'm going to go get another sip of water before I start this. People around here won't drink tap water. They buy a bottle of water, you know. You say, based on what? What happened? What happened? Nothing happened. It's just somebody said, oh, you know, that water's bad for you. I heard it causes cancer. Oh, yeah. And then the whole community says, you heard that? And I'm like, no, I never heard that. That would be on TV. That would be in the newspaper. All right. But why wouldn't they be that way? They're like that now. I see people walking around like they're in the in, in the um, one of these 1972 end of the world movies. So I'm full of fear. So don't get me started on bottled water, says in man. Well. You can see the color is going to be a problem here because I had to close my eyes this morning with that uh, challenge that wasn't very challenging for long because that the double oak from Woodford Reserve clearly showed through. Clearly showed through. 
still like the Cooper's Craft. Every time I drink it, I like it more than the previous time. And I don't really like bourbon. <laughs> People say you don't like bourbon. Does two hundred bourbon videos every month. That's an, it's not that many in a year. Probably two hundred. I got a lot of bourbon too, and I haven't even opened it all. Uh, look how much darker this one is. This one's brown. No, tan. Well, tan is a type of brown, isn't it? A shade of brown. So tan and gold, which is a shade of yellow. Oh, look, let's mix them together and make a 1980 Dodge Adventurer truck with brown and gold trim, two-tone. Remember, all those trucks used to be two-tone. And then the interior would be like, what, brown vinyl? <clears throat> the brown carpet, but I wouldn't get carpet in the truck. I'll just get that rubberized floor mat, rubber floor mat. But that was that color. You remember that color, the yellow and brown. But it was, or could you could get cream color too, cream and brown. So you get a truck that looked like a bread shop, cornbread, brown bread. Wouldn't be metallic brown. You could have gotten metallic brown on a 1987 Mustang LX 5.0. That'd be a sleeper or an 85 LX 5.0. That's carbureted. Those are pretty powerful for them at that time. You could you could have gotten a, a brown metallic. Just with the old. 80s, uh, however many holes, uh, rims ahead, the sport rims, brown vinyl interior, brown carpet, and people say, look at that old grandmother car, but then that exhaust, you, you hit the gas and they find out it ain't no grandmother car. All right. Of course, if you got a GT, everybody's going to know it's ready to go with all the, you know, the graphics on the hood and all that. Remember they had that blackout hood, that flat black. It was sort of like a decal, though. I can imagine that thing must have peeled off after a few years. I guess you could have gotten the GT. I guess you could have gotten the GT without the appliques on it. But you might have had to special order it. It would probably been less money, but because you know all the dealerships were going to order it with that on there. But you might have been able to order that and get a credit. Nobody orders cars, though. You can do it. They don't do it. Nobody does it, but you can do it. Got to wait for them to make it. Okay, this is a uh, liquor smelling. <laughs> you say liquor smelling. Fascinating. You do a great channel. Say beer smells like beer and this smells like liquor. Can't get over that. But you know what I'm saying? Just smell like regular old booze, alcohol of any sort. About 80 proof, which is making me think it's the Cruzan. The Croy, people in St. Croix are called Croisians. Croisians, Croisians. So Cruzan comes from that term, Cruzan, meaning it's from St. Croix. It's a Cruzan. It lives down there. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. You know, that's the Bacardi. It's so rich and woody and sweet. And molasses, it's like candy, but good candy. See, with bourbon, I complain that it smells like candy corn. Like you get it at Halloween, you never want to eat it. But this smells like real good cane sugar because that's what it is that's what it is all right bottled water might be the biggest waste of money that exists says kevin johnston you ain't joking with that i agree kevin you are right kevin i personally really enjoy cruising when i go to work people laugh at me because i drink bottle i drink tap water 
Why are you drinking that stuff? I said, because I'm thirsty. And they always make coffee with bottled water. But when they're not looking, I'll make it with tap water. And they don't have a notice. <laughs> They'll just drink it. <clears throat> just real coffee for a man. Or the women will say, this is a real coffee for a woman. <sighs> not that stinking rotten tap water coffee. And I'm behind the curtains going, <laughs> Okay, I know it's Bacardi, so I'm going to look. Ha, ha, ha. No contest. And I didn't even taste it. Laplace is not known for his tap water. I know it's known for Andouille. Oh, well. It's good well water. And if you go to New Orleans, you can get some good river water because that's where the fossil water comes from, right out the Mississippi River, just like in St. Louis, just like your Budweiser. Your Budweiser is made from river water. They asked that on the tour. Does anybody know where this water comes from? People were going to say, like, the Rocky Mountains, a spring, a gurgling brook. I raised my hand. I said, the Mississippi River? The, the ladies, the girl says, oh. That's right. <laughs> Put a filter on my tap and it's excellent. Now see, lots of issues with the water plant over there. Oh yeah, those have been fixed. Those problems have been fixed. And it, and it never really made the water bad. It was just, they were having problems with the thing would break. <laughs> you know, the equipment was old, I guess. Oh yeah, it's a taste challenge. I gotta taste it. <laughs> All right. Um, Cruzan. So see, I guessed and I didn't even smell it. I mean, huh, breakdown, mental breakdown. I didn't even taste it and I got it right. On smell only. And does the Bacardi smell a lot better? It does. And it had better smell a lot better. This was $9.99 a bottle. That costs $30 a bottle, $28 or $30 a bottle. That'd taste better. Uh, Cruzan tastes like old alcohol burn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I get wood, though. I get charred oak. That's what it, it's really kind of harsh because it's the woodiness that's making it seem like that. Like, you don't expect all that wood. That's because it's in the barrel two to four years. So you just say the wood. It's hard to take. This is what's going on. And this is going on. Uh, so if you don't like that hard, okay, yeah, you could call it a harsh wood approach. It's kind of loud. <laughs> if you don't like that, the cruzan is not going to be for you. I don't mind it. It's just kind of jarring, you know, but I ain't got it wrong yet. At least, David Arthur says, hey, Ron, hello to you, David. At least by me, I think the bottled water phase is declining. Oh, I hope so. Uh, at all the buildings I visit for work, they have filter water refilling stations, and most people have their own reusable bottle. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Cruzan is great for the price, but I understand that people don't agree. Inman says, however, I just shake my head. That was Kevin that said that last time. And man, however, I just shake my head when I see these people at Costco put numerous cases in their cart. Oh, I see that going on all day long, all day. And I mean, you got, what is it, a pint bottle, 12 ounces, uh, 16 ounces? How fast could you drink that? You could drink it so quickly. And you drink it another one and another one and another one. If you get enough hydration, it's hot here in Louisiana, 90 degrees. For months and months and months. You're just blowing through money. You're just blowing through your money. Oh, man, this is so much better. This is the best rum I ever tried. <laughs> it really is. It's the best rum I've ever tried. It's better than the 10-year age. Why? I do not know. It's a different complex. 
it's a different composition of rum, you see. I think the 10 year age uses different rums in the blend, but they're not as good. Well, it's a great one. I wouldn't pay $10 extra because it's not as good as this one, which is $10 cheaper. But man, man. It's so rich. It's so deep. The flavor is deep. It's savory. Or as the reviewers like to say when they want you to know they're smart. It's got umami. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it is funny. It always cracks me up when they say that. They make, they make a point to say it too. But I don't mind. I always make a point to say stuff. I do that. But um, It's so savory and rich. It's almost like oh, creme brulee, which I pick on David because he says it wrong. And I look at him like, what did you say? Um, but this is like that. This is creme brulee. Mm. It's fantastic. See, this is what the rum experience is like. These kind of things. The Appleton Estate. And I know that's a basic one. I get that. Still re really good. $20 a bottle. I saw one that was 40 I wanted to get it, but I got too much stuff. But that's when you get up to this level. I want to try the goslings too, yeah. But you know what the next one I'm gonna buy is gonna be? <sighs> the Ron Rico. You say Ron Rico, you may as well buy Cruzan. I know. Ron Rico's an old brand. I was looking at old magazine ads from 40 something years ago, Ron Rico. It's an old brand too, you know, it's like from the 1800s, 1870, but everything can't be number one. So Ron Rico was there for a long time, but um, it just got relegated, you know, to the lower shelf. It never could compete with Bacardi. They tried, they tried, they tried, they tried. I think Ron Rico was owned by uh, some company like General Spirits Company, but it was really Seagram's. Seagram's had all these alias companies. And I think Ron Rico was always just a Seagram's brand that they had bought from somebody. And then Seagram's sold it to Jim Bean when Seagram's went kaplooey. That's a word that means they fell apart. <laughs> Um, Kaplui, is that a Yiddish word like Chasa? You know what Chasa is, Frank? It's a pig that don't fly right. For me, Bacardi is an excellent product and value. I love Bacardi Black. Oh, yeah, that's one of the best I ever had. Good for you, Ron, to get into hard liquor. Thank you. Might be bad for me, right? It's just not for me. I did get into a white a wine habit a few years ago, but red wine to me leaves a chalky film in my mouth. I prefer white to red, and I do like champagne. Well, what do I always say? You may as well drink what you like, right? Just drink what you like. I have people that tell me I only drink craft beer, and it's got to be at least a double IPA. Well, if you like it, drink it. I have other people tell me I can't get into craft beer. I don't like it. I'd rather drink Bush Light. I like light beers. There's nothing wrong with that. You can start a channel on YouTube called Light Beer Reviews. You probably get more followers than the people that are doing the craft beer. You probably have a huge channel. Like Nina was talking about, I do mostly car repairs. She said car repairs. Like for like she does that, I guess she does it for a job partly. And I said, that would that would make the channel, it'd be way bigger than beer reviews. You know what I mean? Like car repair videos will get millions of views. And if you make them specific, like how to change a battery on a Ford Focus in years, uh, you'll get a million views. 
I actually watched a YouTube video on how to change battery in a Ford Focus and I changed the battery in my daughter's Ford Focus. I said, those people at AutoZone don't know what they're doing. I said, so easy. They just, they're telling her, you got to go to the store, you got to go to the dealer because they didn't know how to take it out. And they didn't bother looking. All I had to do was take a bracket off and it slipped right out. And Walmart was like, they didn't know how to change that. The people at Walmart laughed. They ch they told my daughter, we can change that. Oh, that's right. They did it. I was going to do it. And then they said, my, she said, no, they, they laughed and said they did it. It was like, took no time. But that's, that's where your money is. If you want to make money on this channel, YouTube, car repair, home repair, cooking videos, how to cook spaghetti meatballs, stuff like that. That's your big money. Like I said last night, they all bust out laughing. I said, these little nicky knack beer reviews. I'm not putting it down. I'm not trying to say beer reviews are bad. They're fun. What do you think I do all the time? But that's not going to get you a lot of views. May give you some. I know people that got so many subscribers on beer. 25,000 subscribers. But they don't have hardly any views. So where did you get the subscribers? Oh, yeah, you bought them. True story. The red wine I tried was some of the Carlo Rossi you reviewed. That was probably the best wine I ever had, says N Man. <laughs> Just goes to show you. I like Carlo Rossi wines. My friend makes fun of me for buying natural ice. It's irritating, but I just watch him drink Bud Light like that's so much better. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's not even as good, in my opinion. How many times would I take natural light over Bud Light? Natural ice. Not natural light, maybe, but natural ice over Bud Light, like every time. Ron, do you watch any hockey games? No, I do not. I used to watch the Hartford Whalers back in the early 1980s, 81, 82, 83, when they used to show hockey on USA Network. Then the team moved away. So I was like, I'm there watching hockey again. I think if you started a food review channel, you would really do well with your views. You would. I'm not going to do it. But other people do it. Make, they make a lot of headway on that. I wouldn't start a food review channel. Okay, well, I'm just talking now because this challenge is over. I mean, the Bacardi is so obviously better. It's so profoundly better you know what i'm saying it's way better is it worth the 28 to 30 dollars that you're going to pay up as opposed to the 9.99 yeah it's worth it because it's way better i don't dislike the cruzan i think it's fine i like it actually i like it on its own merits it's all right it's all right it's all right but when you put it in competition then it's not all right you know what I mean? Like a lot of these Scotch whiskeys I have on their own, they're nice. But when you put them in competition, they just fall apart. They can't compete. They can't compete. But on their own, if you only drank that, like if you bought this brand of Scotch and you only drink it and you never compared to anything, you probably like it. You'd enjoy it. It'd be fine. But in competition, in a blind taste test, all the flaws come out. Think if you, I know why Bacardi is better. Cruzan for me was a great mixer. Yeah, it, even regular Bacardi was way better, you know. It was a pretty good deal better. And that's a mixer too. But this Cruzan is a sipper. And it's a clear winner. Oh, well, if I do a taste challenge, I'm going to do them all against all the others. Now, when I had the Johnny Walker Blue Label, I mean, <laughs> I put it in taste challenges against other quality brands you know what i'm saying like i wasn't going to put johnny walker blue label in a taste challenge against highland mist or uh, like uh green plaid inverhouse green plaid because then you're just wasting the whiskey because you know inverhouse has no imaginable chance against johnny walker blue you know what i mean it would be no t challenge it might be an excuse to drink. If you're that bad off that you need to drink, why would you be doing that with Johnny Walker Blue Label, right? So 
<clears throat> it would just be wasting the Johnny Walker blue. I'm going to put it in competition against, you know, other Johnny Walker levels, Buchanan higher levels, uh, you know, things like that, things that are going to cost me a lot of money. Will you ever do liquor taste challenges involving a mixer? That would be great to see. Nah, I don't think so. I don't know anything about mixed drinks. But I see people talk about them all day long. They got video channels where people do mixed drinks, bitters, all kind of cherries, expensive cherries, all kind of syrups, all kind of triple sec and all of those things from Caliber and the uh, Kuiper and all that. I mean, those people got thousands of views. That's a big thing. That is a big area, cocktails. Oh, and it's strange about Caliber, because if you get Caliber from Walmart, it's just those plastic cheap bottles. But if you go to the liquor store, they got Caliber. Like I say, all of these uh, creme de mint and all of that, and triple sec and banana stuff and all. It's all glass bottles, glass. And it says the same thing as the Walmart, IWA Distilling, I period W period A period Distilling Company Limited in Louisville, Kentucky. Trademark data shows that Walmart owns it. So I mean, does Walmart have their own liquor brand that other people can sell? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Cause I was over there at Savannah Discount last week. And I said, week before last, I said, look, glass. As caliber. And it looks like a lot of people buy it to make cocktails. So I don't know. I don't know these ownership questions too well. Ron, do you think, okay, that's it. This challenge is over. It's been 32 minutes. It's got to end. And man, Ron, do you think Sierra Nevada has been a rut for the past year or so in a rut? Mm, I don't know. I guess so. A lot of companies in a rut. Many of their styles have disappeared around me and I have not really seen anything new or interesting from them in a while. Yeah. You might be right, but I'm not sure. Same thing with Anchor, right? When's the last time you saw Anchor Old Foghorn, right? Uh, let's see. Anchor, don't they make the Old Foghorn barley wine style ale? And isn't it North Coast Brewing that makes another barley wine called, uh, uh, let's see, the Sierra Nevada? Bigfoot, and it's the old foghorn, and then there's the uh, crap, I can't remember. They're all all three of them are dynamite. I just prefer watch and I haven't seen it, any of those three in so long. I prefer watching a challenge where it's just the product without a mixer for sure. But with your experience, I thought it would be cool. I don't, but I don't have any experience with that. I understand why you don't do mixed challenges. I still love their products. So as long as they produce Torpedo, I don't need a new product from Sierra Nevada, right? I can't even get Anchor products by me. Yeah, the only place I see Anchor around here these days is Trader Joe's. And I only see Anchor Steam. That's it. Anchor I don't know. I miss I used to get excited, but I would go to the I would go to the beer store and they would have all these anchor beers lined up, you know, all these different brands. And I'd be like, ooh. And they would have they were all so good. And then they would have all these North Coast beers lined up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I love the barley wines the most and the IPAs. Now, huh. No, I need to buy some national Bohemian. Yeah, I can't get it. I have to drive a thousand miles to get it. All right, that's it. So in on, on Tuesday, Tuesday morning at Dawn Busters, God willing, we're gonna do the Cruzan. I love the bottle though, you gotta admit. The Cruzan versus um 
the Grand Reserva Diaz. Diaz, 10-year age. Oh, man. Natty Bo, my opinion is I like it. And I and I missed the Bo Ice. I got a can down there, a natural Bohemian Ice, believe it or not. Bought that in Baltimore, in the city limits of Baltimore. Not, not in a suburb, in the city. Tell you where, I can pretty much tell you where I bought it. I can tell you the, the store I went to. I'd have to look it up on a map. But I definitely... I remember it was on the uh, south side of the highway. You know, the highway goes east-west. It was on the south side, the eastbound side, U.S. Highway 40. Cruise and rocks, i always support it. Good. Natty Bo, I, ne I never seen or had it either. Hmm. Have you? Ha, ha, you didn't get roughed up. Ha, ha, no. But it was a little worrisome. But I was in and out, didn't play around. Went in there, got the, I saw that bow ice. I said, bow ice? Bought that six pack. And I was gone. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get home and try it. What did it taste like? Oh, regular old ice beer, but it was cool to have it because everybody is always amazed. Whoa, bow ice. I was like, yep. And I got it and nobody else did. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. Y'all take care now.